It's getting hot in here. Hi, how are you? Hi. I am inside of a really hot car right now. This is such a weird way to start the video. Hi, how y'all doing? Welcome back to another video. So, I was at the store looking at home decor that I will never be able to bring home because like, you know, I have cats and that's like really nice home decor, really expensive. Maybe if I had like well-behaved cats, but no, my cats are just really terrible. A lot like this. <laughs> We can't have nice things here, but I still like to go to stores and look at the stuff. So while I was there, I came across, let me go get it. it it's right there. Not here. Ow. <laughs> this is actually kind of a funny story. I like to go to Sam's and like I buy stuff, you know, I don't just go for the boxes. I also like steal boxes. I don't know if it's stealing because like they never say anything to me about taking them. I go to Sam's, I buy stuff and then I like take a bunch of boxes from like their displays and <laughs> bring them home for my rats. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I have all these boxes. Anyways, here it is. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> okay. This is what I'm so excited about. Uh, <laughs> the seatbelt buckle poked me in a very not so pleasant place. <laughs> we are gonna turn this into a really dope terrarium. It has a door, it locks. It freaking locks. That alone is just like, oh my god, y'all. You take it out. The freaking door is so nice. I'm gonna, oh, I almost broke it. I'm worse than my cats. I bought these at the dollar store. So, you know, one dollar for each one. A dollar for some rocks? What? I know I could have just took some from my yard, but like, these are pretty. Okay. <laughs> So I had every intention of filming this video outside today because, you know, it's a really nice day or whatever. And my neighbors are actually playing really loud music. We are moving the project indoors. It's fine. You know what? It's fine. So this is another glass candle box holder thing. I don't even know what these are called. This one I actually bought like one or two years ago around Christmas. That's why it kind of has like Christmassy stuff inside. I thought like, you know, while I'm at it, let's go ahead and turn this one into a terrarium as well. The first thing I noticed with these is that we have to cover up these large openings. So here we are taking out the Christmassy decor from this one. I'm actually kind of hoping that these are out again this year so that I could buy a few more. I kind of want to have a few more of these for like a few other little critters. So it'd be really cool to like find these again this year around Christmas time. So I'm using this like plastic black canvas material and we're going to use that to cover up the big holes. But what's great about this stuff is that like it still allows plenty of air circulation. So we're not going to suffocate the inhabitants of this. So I'm just taking some scissors and I'm kind of cutting this to size slowly, taking my time, but like making sure it fits snugly. So here is the circle finally shaped properly. And now I'm gonna take this like crafting liquid silicone. I don't even know what this is. It's non-toxic and safe. Like it's the kind of stuff kids use. So I'm adding a generous amount of the glue all around the circle and just pressing the patch on top of that. 
So now I'm just taking more of this black canvas material. I'm just kind of rolling it up into a cylinder like this and this will cover up these bigger holes. Now I like they I could have just left them alone, but you know, me being paranoid, I went ahead and <laughs> added some of that on there as well. And this one, yeah, we definitely had to cover these up because the critter is going in here definitely fit through that and like we don't want them getting out okay so for the inside i decided to try making these like bendy vines but like the diy version so i actually don't know the diy version like i'm literally making this up as i go so i have this like whole roll of this i don't even know what this is string and stuff it's not like string it's like this material by the way, this stuff also makes a great tripod. <laughs> I have like eight different tripods throughout the house. I just was way too lazy to go get any of them. This is how I filmed this. So I'm just unrolling a whole bunch of it and adding like five or six different layers. I'm also taking some wire and this is what's going to allow the bendy part and it will also allow this to hold its shape. So I'm feeding the wire in through all the different layers of this string stuff and all the little ends of the string. I'm just kind of looping them through the wire and then closing the wire with all the little loops inside. That's not going anywhere. Like they are sealed in between the wire. So now I'm just wrapping the wire around the little string thingamabobber. See, I really wish I could tell you guys actual name of this string. And repeated the same thing for the end of the wire. Just made a little loop, fed all the ends of the string thingamabobbers through it and closed it. And that pretty much it. Just tying it up at the end, make it all neat and pretty. So this I actually think was way too long. So I ended up folding it down and twisting it. So that's why it's shorter now and thicker. And then I also made a second one using pretty much the same process except at the end I wrapped like a bunch of the string a bunch of times that's why it has that kind of texture so now comes the, the fun part not really <laughs> so you can actually skip this step like you don't have to do this especially if you find this string thingamabobber material in a darker color then there's really no need for you to paint it black but whatever color is under will peek through eventually when the coating, the outside coating starts to fall out. You want it to be a dark color. So I'm just taking some spray paint and painting these things black. That's my bird, by the way. That's Ernie. If you hear him, I'm sorry. I have no control over him. <laughs> just, he's happy, okay? So next... I like literally I'm just winging this I have no idea what I'm doing but somehow it worked out in the end I'm taking more of that crafting glue silicone I'm adding a thick layer of it on this thing and then just rolling this around in some dirt and I mean that's pretty much it I repeated this a few more times and it did take a while it's messy too and it's not like a fast project which is why I decided to only make two and also because it was my first time attempting to make these so i didn't know if it was gonna work out so you know i only tried to make two but next time i try and make these i definitely would want to make like a whole bunch of them at the same time so after you get the whole thing coated you do have to kind of keep going back and adding more layers for it to look more realistic i mean like you don't have to right but the more layers you add, the more realistic I think it looks. So I just kind of kept adding more of this glue stuff over the dirt coating and coating it again. And this is when I stopped. Like I, I felt like that was thick enough and realistic enough. So this is when you want to do most of your shaping if you're using this kind of glue. Because this kind of glue dries hard. So I was pretty happy with the shape here and I just set these aside and let them dry and repeated the process on the second vine. I think these turned out super well. Like they look super realistic. I'm really happy with them, especially because it was my first time ever attempting something like this and now time for a break so I'm trying to like take a selfie with buddy because I want to post it onto Instagram this is on point this is what it's like to have a mud turtle they rather just you know like hide in their shells and like, not face the world so here's my selfie with my mud turtle <laughs> Yeah.
he's coming out he's so shy he's hiding because the surroundings right now are just not his not because of me like he usually comes out for me this girl is on fire she's walking on fire she's just a girl but she's on fire he kind of comes out when I sing to him even though my singing is terrible like that's probably why he's coming out because it's so terrible he's like telling me human I'm out stop singing so precious hi how are you I've missed you I've missed you so much look that's the people say hi <laughs> selfie time So a few months ago, I bought a box of these like sticky tiles, the kind that you stick on. You don't really need glue or anything. They have this like paper backing, you peel it off and you just stick it down. I have a lot of these left over from a previous project. So instead of DIYing a background, I decided to use these as a background because I really like the look of these for a background. So I'm measuring out the side first. So measuring how high I need the background to be. Not gonna lie, I kind of really hate working with these. That's why there's like so many of them left over. Just they're so sticky, they're so messy. It's really annoying. It sticks to everything. The glue never really goes away. And I actually never peel off the backing. I just don't think it's necessary. If you measure correctly, you'll get a nice snug fit there's no need to actually glue these down something i like to do about the super messy sticky glue that gets all over the place i actually roll these on dirt so that dirt sticks to the glue it just makes these more usable basically and trying to wipe the glue off is a nightmare and it doesn't work so this is the only way that i actually end up using these it was a nightmare working with these. I, I hate it, but I love how they look. So I have like a love-hate relationship with these things. What I really like though is that it's really easy to cut into them. I'm just taking this knife and not really even adding too much pressure. As you can see, it's super easy to score it. And then you just bend it and it snaps right where you scored it. Like if you had to, you could also just cut these with scissors. It'll be a little bit annoying to cut this with scissors, but like it will cut. Here I am just checking the fit and yeah. Like I told you guys, you don't need to like peel off the backing and glue these down. If you leave them kind of at a tight fit, like they will just kind of really snugly fit on there and it's a lot better. And aw, look how pretty they look together. Love this. Love how this is turning out. I decided to like also cut a section for the bottom to use kind of like a moisture barrier between the substrate and the wood. And aw, look how pretty this is looking, you guys. <laughs> so I repeated the same thing onto the other terrarium thing. And yeah, this is where we're at now. Okay, so... Everything that I'm using inside the terrarium, I sterilized. The substrate is actually organic potting soil with no pesticides or anything harmful in them that could hurt the inhabitants of the terrarium. I'm sterilizing the vines as well just because, uh, you know, I did roll these in dirt as well as this bark hide and these leaves. The stones from the craft store, I just ran really hot water on them. So I have two beautiful little helpers here. Very gorgeous, very chubby, very cute. <laughs> so now I'm just cleaning the terrariums up really good before I start adding stuff inside You know because I was working on them outdoors like they got really dirty and like messy and sticky and Yeah, they needed this wash. Okay. Oh you guys look at my little babies. They're so cute Just enjoy this cute content. Okay. I'll be back in a bit.
obviously starting out with the soil i'm adding a kind of generous amount but like not overdoing it next thing i'm adding is the vines and hides and branches yes i used the branches for this project because i was too lazy to make like more vines but like i wanted to provide more like climbing areas but like not make more vines so these branches i just washed outside with the hose and scrubbed them with a brush and that's like the prep work I did for using them in here so after playing around with the placement of these branches and the vines this is what I decided I was happy with and oh look a kitty so now I'm adding these cute little terracotta pot bowl looking things so these are for food and like greens and stuff and of course no house is complete without a little aloe vera plant like I know they're probably gonna eat it but like I still added it in here for them next I'm adding some of these rocks from the craft store all around the food and water area so that they don't track soil into the food and stuff now i decided to put this little wreath to use because let's face it i wasn't gonna do anything else with it so i'm pulling apart some of these leaves and foliage and decorating the inside of the terrariums a bit like i knew i didn't want any live plants in these because i didn't really want to deal with the hassle of like trying to keep them alive plus any live plants i add in here will just like get eaten so we're adding just little bits of fake foliage <laughs> and it looks cute i think it's cute now to finish it up i'm just adding a few leaves here and there not too many and they're actually really great for like hiding spots and they look pretty and ta-da we are done i don't know about you guys but i think these turned out super cute but what do you guys think let me know down below in the comments say like a week since i've completed the builds on the terrary arms <laughs> why do i talk like that sometimes it's been about a week and i have not added the inhabitants in there so you see what had happened was i found a caterpillar so i ended up placing it in one of the terrariums temporarily like my intention was not to keep it there so it was this caterpillar so the next morning i found it like all spinning itself into a cocoon so like i wasn't gonna like disturb it you know that's that's not what you do you don't disturb it. it's metamorphosis so that terrarium is now occupied for the next two weeks at least today i actually ended up finding another caterpillar and it's like, this one's really cool like look at it like it's so pretty look at those like spots it kind of looks like coral like if you're into salt water this this is something that you could probably find in an aquarium so it's living here as well and uh yeah this terrarium turned into a caterpillar grow out accidentally and that's awesome like i am living for it so we won't be adding the inhabitants that we're going to be going in there just yet but the other terrarium is free so we're going to go ahead and add inhabitants into that terrarium who is going in the terrarium who are these terrariums for let me go get them oh there's a little baby here oh come here sweetheart oh look I'm gonna call you squishy. 
Do not eat him. No. <laughs> She's trying to eat him. <laughs> she eats bugs. So for her, this looks like snack time. <laughs> You guys remember these guys? Hi. Okay, so I feel like everyone that keeps bugs has to have like a picture with them in their face. I'm gonna attempt that right now. <laughs> oh, hopefully none of them will go in my mouth. Okay. Okay. the craziest scariest thing I've ever done why did I do that <laughs> so these are my Madagascar hissing cockroaches that I showed you guys a while ago they reproduced a lot they made me a grandma you guys y'all gotta chill cuz I don't need all them babies okay I'm a lot better at handling them now like when I first got them like no I was super scared of them like I still am I'm not gonna lie but you know I'm working on it can you guys believe like I put them in my face can I get a thumbs up in the video for progress? So I actually plan on splitting them up, like males and females. They are just reproducing way too much and I don't have use for all the cockroaches. Like yeah, I could feed some off, but still like that's just way too many cockroaches. I'm really not trying to like have a cockroach infestation happening. So <laughs> let's go ahead and add a few of them into one of the terrariums so that it's not empty anymore. So here we are. I have the cockroaches in here. We're gonna go ahead and only add males in here because I want the females in this one. So we're gonna look for only males. And it's actually really easy to tell the difference between males and females because males have horns and females don't. So we're just gonna find a few of them that have horns and add them in here. And then once this terrarium is free, I'll go ahead and sort really well through all the ones left over in here and then properly divide all of them up. So yeah. Thank you. 
ahead and announce the giveaway winners from the last giveaway. Thank you all so much who participated. It was really hard choosing winners, like so many entries and like I wanted all of you to win because you're all just so awesome and I love y'all. But what I am gonna do, I'm gonna actually do more giveaways more often so that you guys have more possibilities of winning prizes more often. And please don't be disappointed if you don't win. There's more giveaways coming up and you'll have more chances to win. Here we go. So that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Have a good day or a good night and I love you guys. Bye. Look at you with your little handkerchief. She got all dressed up for you guys. And okay, I wasn't gonna show this because like I'm a little bit ashamed, but like I saw this like giant pencil and had to have it. Like I had to have it, so. Got a giant pencil too. I am living for my makeup today. Like, I never do eyeshadow, like, ever. So, today I decided it was the day to do eyeshadow. And of course, you know, being me being extra as hell, like I usually am, I decided to put all the eyeshadows in my eyes. So, <laughs> hi, bye. Hi, bye, 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 goodbye.